on behalf of this family, sincere and abiding thanks to each and every one of you for being here this morning. Your presence here today not only speaks to your love for Lillian, but your love for her family as well. And it is the heart of this family, it is. It is the heart of this family that all of you would know that your kind and genuine and sincere expressions of sympathy have been greatly appreciated and that your prayers unto the Lord on their behalf have been to this family a source of great comfort and great blessing. Dear family, dear friends of Lil Westdorp, as it was yesterday, it is today and shall be forevermore. Our help, yours and mine, remains steadfast and always in the name of the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. The Lord is my refuge and my strength, my ever-present help in time of trouble. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom then? Of what then? Shall I ever be afraid? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup. My cup overflows. And surely, and without a doubt, a goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pray your blessing upon our time together this morning. Lift up this family and these friends, and grant unto them, O God, we pray your grace and your peace and your abiding love and faithfulness in the days ahead. And we thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord, that you're always with us and that nothing, absolutely nothing, can ever separate us from your love. We pray all these things in the precious and abiding name of Jesus. Amen. At the request of the family, we remain seated and sing the great old hymn of the church, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Lil Westdorp was born in the plan and providence of the Almighty a long time ago. Up north in the Dutch hamlet of Prosper on the 22nd day of July in the year of our Lord, 1926. Solomon, the Old Testament, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter three. Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he writes, there's a time for all of us, for you, for me, for mom, for grandma, to be born. On this past Wednesday, two days past Christmas, at sunset, on the 27th day of December in the year of our Lord, 2023, mom, grandma, Lil, passed from this life and went home to be with the Lord. Once again, Solomon, once again, the Old Testament, once again, the book of Ecclesiastes in chapter three, Solomon writes, there's a time for all of us, not only to be born, but also to die. Lillian, mom, grandma, sister, and friend, 97, 97 years old. And on this, the day of her memorial, from family and friends and all who knew her and loved her, these words, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for her good long life that touched all of us in so many ways. And thanks be to God on this day for the assurance of his word, the blessing of it, the comfort of it, the promise of it in the midst of our broken hearts. For to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5.8. To live is Christ. To die is gain. Philippians 121. None of us lives to himself and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So you, really, you see, it really doesn't matter. We think sometimes it does, but it really doesn't matter. If like grandma we are in Christ, it really doesn't matter whether we live or whether we die because we belong to the Lord. Romans 14, 7, 8, and 9. Blessed and happy are the dead who die in the Lord. Blessed and happy indeed, says the Spirit, for they shall rest from their labors and their good works shall follow them. The Apostle John, Revelation 14, 13. Jesus puts it this way. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, then believe also in me. Jesus said, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. And if that weren't so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself so that where I am, there you may be also. Gospel of John, chapter 14. Beloved family and friends, In these words, we find peace on this day and and hope on this day and assurance. Assurance that in the midst of mom and grandma's passing, she is now with the Lord and with all the loved ones that have gone on before. Oh, and not just for a time, and not just for a season, but for always and forever. The name of the Lord be praised. Yet, our hearts are sad on this day, they just are. But we have reason to rejoice. On this day of her memorial, we remember a good mom and a good grandma and a beloved member of Baldwin Street Church and we rejoice in those remembrances and those memories. She was kind, she was kind. 
She was faithful. She had a heart full of love. Today we remember a good mom and grandma and friend who walked two hours every day at sunset. Who had a sweet tooth. A sweet tooth that fully enjoyed windmill cookies, moose tracks ice cream, and root beer floats. Let this be said, huh? Let this be said. For a tiny little lady, she could pack away the calories, supposedly. (laughs) Having been born in 1926 in the plan and providence of the Almighty, she was a child of the Great Depression, and therefore she knew firsthand, she knew by experience what tough times were like. My dad, who was also a child of the Great Depression, used to always say, and I quote, the Depression was a time, son, when everybody had a whole lot of the same thing. Nothing. But in all times and in all things, Lil had the Lord. She had a servant's heart. She had a kind heart. She loved music, especially the good old hymns of the church. And she loved life. I love this description of her. This is a quote from the family. She was independent, kind, and loving with a touch of stubbornness. Now that'll get you places, won't it? She sent cards to all, and in so doing, covered the birthdays and the graduations with cash. Good old fashioned American dependable spendables. And any other day she deemed appropriate to drop some greeting of love in the mail, she did so and did so to you, the family, that she cherished with all her heart. Love love these words coming up here from her family that described her to a T. And before I read them, uh, let's let's just understand this. Um, In the plan and providence of the Almighty, someday this is you. In the plan and providence of the Almighty, someday this is me. And in that same plan and providence, you and I still draw breath and still interact with family, those that we love most. When that day comes for you and for me, what will your family, what will my family say of you, say of me? Something to think about. Something to think about a lot. Again, love these words from her family. They said it, described her to a T. She was faithful to the max. (laughs) And so she was. And all of you saw that faithfulness and experienced it time and time again. And I would suggest to you on this, the day of this dear lady's memorial, that, that, that faith didn't happen by accident. I would suggest to you that it sprung out of the goodness and grace and love of God, but it also sprung out of her good upbringing at Franklin Street CRC and Rogers Height CRC and at home with her godly parents. Dear family and friends, let's do this. On this the day of mom and grandma's memorial. Let's just give the Lord praise for a life well lived. And a heritage of faith that laid a foundation 
to trust in a good and gracious and faithful covenant God. That's what you got from her in so many ways. Covenant faith that was ingrained in her by her good and godly parents and by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit that led her to love the Lord with all her heart. Now let this be said, let this be said on the day of Lillian Westorp's funeral. The same Lillian Westorp, according to the family, who would be the first to say to this preacher, at my funeral, which is now, Don't eulogize. Can't you just hear her? Just preach Christ. And so I will, just as she desired. And in so doing, let us lift up and bring praise to her Savior who worked wonderful things through her, through her kind heart through her piano playing at sunset, through her spunk and her spirit, through her walking and talking, through her card sending, through her love for people, through her love for music, through that servant's heart that was kind and caring to all. Through her, at times, strong-willed, yet Christ-like personality. And, 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 and through her love for God's word, like Lamentations chapter three, the Lord's compassion and love never fails. Lil was strong-willed big time, strong-willed big time when it came to her faith in her God, who she knew would never leave her or never forsake her. Proverbs chapter three, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. That was, that was grandma. Her heart was always open to the Lord's leading. Like Psalm 73, yet I am always with you, says the Lord, and I will always uphold you by my strong right hand. Grandma knew the goodness of God. And grandma experienced the providence of God. And she knew and knew well many times in the midst of her 97 years of the Lord's presence and faithfulness and goodness and comfort, like Romans 8. And we know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord, for those who are called according to his purpose. Lil Westor believed and experienced the leading of the Lord in the midst of all of her days. And she knew and she believed deeply in her heart that if one knew Jesus and loved Jesus and followed Jesus, that all would work out for the good, the good being absolute security in all things and at all times in the midst of a life that was totally in the Lord's hands. Translation, mom Grandma Lil knew that as long as she was in the Lord's hands, she would be taken care of, led, and blessed. Amen? Amen. 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 And so she was. And so we will be, you and I. Always. If, like her, our faith is strong in Jesus, if, like her, our lives are given to Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, So be it in your heart and mine. So be it in your life and mine. This was a good woman, a good mom and a good grandma. 
This was a good friend to so many of you. This was a great parishioner, a joy to be with and talk to. She was all of those things and so many more things as well. But most importantly, this was a dear lady who loved the Lord with all of her heart, all of her heart, and who knew Jesus as her Savior. And she would want nothing more on this day than for this to be said. If you are here this morning, be you family, be you friend. If you are here this morning and have yet to open your heart to Jesus Christ and know him as your Lord and as your Savior, she would say, do that today. And in so doing, know deeply the blessings of this life as a child of God and understand wholeheartedly that someday, be it sooner or later, but someday when we close our eyes in death, we will, like her, open our eyes in the midst of glory where we will be with all of those who have gone before us and where we will be with the Lord. And where we will be, beloved, and not for a time or a season, but for always. Grandma was clear on that. And she taught all of us well in regard to that. And we thank her for that. But above all that, we give the Lord praise. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the life of Lil Westorp. In it and through it, all here on this day were blessed. As family and friends, we thank you and praise you for your goodness to her and your grace to her and your love to her in Jesus. Bless this good family and these good friends with memories that are sweet and abiding and grant them grace, O God, we pray in the days ahead. We ask it in the precious and abiding name of Jesus. Amen. No one can speak better of, uh, of a grandma than grandkids. And at this time, Jenna and Sarah and Sherry come forward to speak. When we think of grandma, the word that comes to mind first is family and the time spent together in both ordinary times and special times. For me personally, that was Friday morning breakfasts at the Rainbow Grill. Almost every week for the past 20 plus years, we've lost count. For some of us older grandkids, it was um, remember piling in the back of grandpa's work van, all the equipment cleared out lawn chairs and blankets put in. We piled in no seatbelts or car seats in sight and traveled north for family reunion near Cadillac. But it was time together for the day. Friday nights, we gathered at grandma's house and as cousins, we remember drinking pop out of glass bottles, eating a special treat of a little Debbie in a package rather than a homemade cookie and watching Dukes of Hazard in the den. Friday nights became first Sunday lunches at Grandma's house, where cinnamon rolls were very popular. 
There were always lots of cookies and a piece of candy for the ride home. She was always present. Piano recitals, band and choir concerts, grandparents' day at school for both grandkids and great-grandkids, even sporting events, including 11 o'clock p.m. rec league hockey games. She was always there for us and gave us her full attention. We said that too. She was a constant presence in all of our lives, which is impressive because we're like nine pews of people. Um, she was always, you could count on her to be there for everything. If it was special to you, it was special to her. Even when we did get to explain what a gender reveal party was and how to play a bluey themed birthday party game. Um, we all spent a lot of time at grandma's house, not just because we lived a few blocks away, but I think all the grandkids were there for sleepovers, being babysat. Um, us younger cousins were usually banished to the downstairs to play shuffleboard or in the TV room. Um, we remember things like how grandma would make blanket forts with us and not only make it, but get in and crawl in the blanket fort. It's probably good she was tiny. Um, Jessie wanted to play hide and seek and so she crawled under her bed and stayed there for about 20 minutes before wondering where he was and finding out he was still coloring at the table and had long since forgotten. But she was one to make those traditions of breakfasts at the Rainbow and First Sunday. Um, I just remember her always being busy on those first Sundays and even now it, when we're at my parents, we, uh, if she's floating around, we'll say, sit down, Lil. And if she heard you liked a particular food, she would make sure you had it every single time. So we ate malted milk ball ice cream dessert for decades. And she'd always make a separate little container that was low protein for Jenna and Jesse. Um, and the separate golf, golf ball cookies, with uh, some with coconut and without. She loved her sweets, but any other food would take all the spices or any sauces out to make sure you know, everyone would like it. Um, I think Jill is the one who remembered her refrigerator door being stocked with pop, and if you didn't finish the whole can, then you'd get the little uh, plastic wrap on top to save the half can of pop. Yep. Um, I also remember um, hanging out in her living room around the piano bench, the piano that is now at my parents' house. And um, my last pictures and videos are with her, with my kids, playing the piano and singing with them around the piano. Um, she wasn't going to bring that piano to sunset because she didn't know if anyone would want to hear her play. And that was not the case. So I think her and her neighbor sat and listened to hymns a lot. And when um, one of the great grandkids came over to play piano, she'd open the doors to make sure everyone could hear and enjoy that too. Grandma was always humming or plunking out a hymn. Um, I know they said don't eulogize, but we're stubborn too. <laughs> Um, so grandma always let us know how much we were loved and cherished by all the little things that she did, spending, sending us birthday and anniversary cards, and somehow she knew how long it would take to get to you so that it arrived on that special day. But when it did arrive, it took you a, a good while to read it because we all know her handwriting wasn't that great. Um, she also, um, Lindsay was reminiscing that grandma would be surprising people at JCS with her famous cinnamon rolls. That's how good they were. Even strangers knew about them now. Um, at Christmas, all the single grandkids would look forward to getting shower gel and chapstick in their Christmas presents. But once you were married, then you got the really coveted caramel corn. Though I did break tradition once and I told her I wanted caramel corn and said so the next Christmas I got caramel corn even though I did not get married yet. <laughs> Um, Grandma always complained. She always told me about her knobby hands and how she hated her knuckles. Um, but as much as she complained about them, they were so skilled in the fact that she could crochet better than anybody I knew. Um, she made all of us an Afghan or two or three. I don't know how many you all got. Um, and then when everybody had more than enough, she started making comfort shawls for families of organ donors. I think we estimated probably like almost 100 of those. So she's helped out many, many people. I did not learn how to crochet, but I can knit, and I made her one winter hat to pay her back for the many Afghans she made me. Um, when Grandma moved to Sunset, Mark and I actually got her dining room table, and we were pretty excited about that because that was the heart of their um, house and the heart of first Sundays that I remember and family get-togethers. 
and we were really excited to have more memories being made. Um, Grandma loved us unconditionally and wanted nothing more than all of us to see us walk with the Lord. She prayed for us by name, and she really, it was a priority to her to support both our earthly lives and our spiritual lives. Um, we were blessed with 97 and a half-ish years. Uh, we know that this isn't goodbye, and as Grandma told Jesse back in September, we'll see you soon. It's heartwarming to know that she's in heaven, surrounded by her family, and plunking out some good old hymn. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, so much. Yeah, in the plan and providence of the Almighty, uh, someday the funeral belongs to you, and someday the funeral belongs to me. Wonder what my grandchildren, wonder what your grandchildren will say about me, will say about you. I hope and I trust and I pray along with you that on that day, One of them, most of them, all of them will say, first and foremost, they love the Lord. May God grant it. You're all so blessed as children and grandchildren to have a mom and a grandma who love the Lord. At the request of the family, we sing together, Precious Lord, take my hand. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord has given and the Lord has taken away. Blessed always and ever be the name of the Lord. To Almighty God, we now commit this his servant, Lillian Westorp, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. I'd like to close the service this morning with a true story. I've said it before at many funerals, but it's a story that, uh, that beckons us, that beckons us to live for the Lord and most importantly, first and foremost, to know our Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and know unequivocally that the only way to heaven is through him. I I, I visited an old guy, and I mean old. This guy was 97, 98, old like grandma, a couple, three years ago in a nursing home. Didn't know him, didn't know him, but was asked to visit him by a member of his family, and I did. He could hardly talk. He was all crippled up physically, and mentally, he was still pretty sharp. And, uh, and uh, we talked for a little bit, and then he, he held up his thumb and his, and his finger, and he tried to snap it. And he went, 
like that. And he said to me, and I'll never forget it, he said to me, yeah, yeah. you know what that is, Reverend? You know what that is? Yeah. Snap your finger. No, no, he says. I'm 97 years old, 98, whatever he was. He says, and that was my life. It went that fast. Translation. Translation. Life is short and life is brief no matter how long we live. 97? That's my life. Life's short no matter how long we live. We don't know how long we're going to live. We don't know how long we're going to be here. That's in the plan and providence of the Almighty. If you are, and, and Grandma would be okay with this. If you are here on this day and have yet to open your heart to Jesus Christ and know him as your Lord and know him as your Savior and stand up in church if you have a church, and I know most of you do, and confess him as your Lord and Savior. If you haven't done that yet, if you haven't made that decision yet and you know the Holy Spirit is working in you, make that decision today. Go see your pastor today and go tell him that you love the Lord Jesus Christ and you want to make that public and you want to accept him as your Lord and as your Savior. Oh yeah, but reverend, I'm like only 15 years old. I'm in my early 20s. I just got married. I got a whole lot of life ahead of me and I'll do it sometime down the road. Here it is, here it is. We ain't all gonna do 97. We ain't all gonna do 97. I just went through the seventh anniversary of a son that I lost seven years ago at 32. We ain't all gonna do 97. If you know Christ as your Lord and as your savior, go to your pastor and tell him you want to make that confession public and become a full member of your church. It's the only way to have Christ in the heart. It's the only way to gain heaven. It's the only way. And who knows that right now? Grandma does. She taught you well. She taught you well with her faith and with her example. Now it's your turn as the Lord leads to step up and confess Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and the Lord grant you his peace. Amen. On behalf of Lillian's family, thank you all for being here today. I know they truly appreciate your presence. In just a few moments when you are dismissed, please join them in the fellowship hall in the lower level. I know they love to continue that time of fellowship and refreshment with you. And the family will be joining uh, later this, um, this afternoon at Georgetown Cemetery. But before that, please join them for a time of fellowship and refreshment. At this time, please ask the pallbearers to step forward. The remainder of you will be dismissed. Once again, thank you for coming.